having here, having a good time with my friends. I don't care. I'm just having here, having a good time with my friends. Oh, bro, we're on. Oh, I'm not even near my mic. You gotta get in your comfy chair, man. Oh, welcome to episode. Christ. Are we gonna remember the, even the numbers of episodes? Whatever, episode two, uh, we think. <laughs> we can't forget when it's episode two. You know, it's episode two uh, of of the Rob Bailey Show, brought to you by Flag Nor Fail, FlagNorFail.com, which is our wonderful apparel line, uh, Adventure Streetwear Limited. Uh, what are the other words we throw? All in the there? buzzwords. All the buzzwords. Quality, quantity, <laughs> apparel. <laughs> Um, but for real though, that's a, that's a brand, uh, it's been around for 10 years now. I started in my garage, Austin came on and it's our, it's our full-time work. Um, in addition to that, also sponsoring the show is Dana Lynn Bailey.com. Uh, yeah. Who, uh, actually is now posting. I don't know if you know this. She's posting dumbbell only workouts yep. every single day. A new workout comes live. And then she's posting no weight workouts. Well done. So if you don't have any gym equipment since we're all on uh, lockdown now for Quarantine. coronavirus. Yeah, now you have no excuse. So, and that's only $7 to learn from Miss Olympia. So she is our sponsor. She's currently paying uh, for this building, which is, you know, I'm proud of her. Pretty neat. Yeah, pretty neat. Uh, also brought to you by RunEverythingLabs.com, our supplement line, fully vegan. Um Pretty simple line we have. Yeah. We don't. Well, it's simple we, for the right reasons. Yeah, it's simple for the right reasons. We don't overcomplicate it with uh, magic pills, <laughs> right? We've never decided to make yeah. magic pills no, like we, everyone we, else does. We just pretty much make solid, consistent supplements that are that are proven by science. Yeah, I mean we don't push the science thing, but yeah, that is. Great. I know it's the first time I've ever said it, but I figured I'd say it. What else? Ooh, uh, podcast microphone setup brought to you by. KillRobBailey.com. Hey. I even put like a little radio voice on can, that. Can I get a new stand then? Because my stand has masking well, tape on it. Well, you broke the stand. Yeah, yeah. But beside the point. Yeah, we can get you a new stand. Okay. Just I'm actually me. thinking about getting the new... Uh, when I was on Andy, Andy Stump's podcast, he had these like headset things. And I felt like I was a helicopter pilot. <laughs> was it so you could hear and... Yeah, dude. Everything. It's like an all-in-one thing. He's a big fancy board. Yeah, let's get them to sponsor Yeah, us. dude. What? Yeah, get them to sponsor us. Who? Whoever the headset company is. Bro, I tried. To, I checked our um, our sponsor inbox. So if you go to killrobbailey.com, uh -huh. you can uh, try to sponsor the show. I forgot to put the email and, address on there. And right? yeah, so I, I checked the email, and there wasn't one email <laughs> in the account. And I was like, man. And I went to the site, and yeah, there's no... Um, yeah, I fucked that one up. Yeah, you did. It's all right, though. I added it. I, I sent you an email. I sent yeah, my I requests. I felt weird s sending that. That's the best way to do it because then I don't forget about it. All right. It. There was something I actually forgot to put on there, too. Really? Yeah, it's the uh, the intro thing I needed, uh, uh, which right. also wasn't That means I'm not going to do it then. I know. Uh, I'll send you another email, another request. That's email. how I work. If, if I have a list, and because a lot of times people tell you shit in passing yeah. while I'm like going to the bathroom and also trying to do a bunch of other stuff, yeah. and then I'm like, I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to do it because you didn't email to me. It's so that simple. You it's, it one me. thing I've noticed about you that I've learned to appreciate is you email everything. Uh -huh. Because I have to keep covering when someone tracks. tries to fuck you over in two months, uh -huh. you're like, oh, I don't know. But if we can look back two months ago to this email that I have, yeah. bum, bum, bum. I've gotten pretty good at that. Oh, I've dude, I back love it. Two I know. Too. I know. Screenshot, text me. I do everything. I know you do. You just got to uh, be aware of what's going on and always. Uh, cover your ass. That's why I never question you. Because if you say something is blah, 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 I just believe you because I know that you have the evidence. So I can't even like... The evidence. I can't even like manipulate the situation. Wait, can, can I bring up that I sponsored this episode by the beverage you're drinking right now? I just got it for you. You did just get me. I don't know what it is, but it's it, a kombucha. I didn't even know where to find them. So it depends what gas station you went to. The one but down the street. Yeah, there's only... There's, I don't... This is the worst brand. I was like... That's the worst flavor? Well, that's the only flavor mm. that kind of sounded interesting. It's the me. worst brand. I don't really... Oh. It's the Hum, H-U-M-M-M-M, -M -M -M, Well, I didn't want to... People in there were making weird uh, derogatory statements at one another. About what? Which, completely true story. I don't want to say it on air. Um, but then I, I was worried for my life to... Because in my mind, I'm like, well, I'm in here looking for the kombucha, so what am I? Wait. 
I'll tell do, you afterwards. What, he, the the one guy was kind of saying that like he may have the vir the virus. Whoa! Or and he was saying it in the gas station. Yes. Yeah, so then this other old guy said what he thought some of the symptoms were, and some of them were not politically correct. And I was standing between the two of them. Oh! And I was like, I'm just here looking for kombucha. So you have the virus so now. So I I mean I call if it's oh, airborne. See, you know what I I saw a funny meme. Am I, so I saw a funny meme the other day, and it's pretty hilarious. Okay. But it said that um, it said a cough is the new N word. So like you know when you hear someone Wait, say, what, "What picture was it accompanied by?" Or was it? It was just, just words. words. It was okay. just words. But you know when like we're at a day and time where like no one says the N word anymore. Yeah. But if you hear it in public, you're like, "Oh my god, dude, that yeah. guy really just." And that's what I feel like coughing is now. When you hear someone cough, you're like, you're like "He is f- infected. Get the fuck away yeah. from me." So I think I, we might as well cover. I mean, are we done with the sponsors? We covered. I got. Oh, the we're kombucha. totally done with the sponsors. We moved on. You yeah, got you're, the broken microphone. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. I got the really good tasting kombucha with the cool graphics on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dana got the building, so we're all squared away. Yeah, we're good. We're good on uh, sponsorships. We're not good on the fact that no one can actually email in to sponsorship the show. <laughs> what is the email? Uh, you, you made it the weirdest email ever. It's yeah, I CS it. at. KillRobBailey.com. Yeah, uh, because Jordan had emailed me. But info would have been perfect. Yeah. Info but at. I could change it. I mean. Just go to the website. Don't actually email. Go to the website. By the time this uh, episode goes off. They're just going to sign me up. They're just going to sign me up. Like anytime anyone finds out one of my emails, they sign me up for dating sites. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's fucking bad, dude. Is it because they're trying to get I don't know. I think it's probably just one dude who's an asshole who's bored. Yeah, it's probably the same guy who's trying to hack into your Instagram account. Yeah, right? he is. And dude, it's yeah, like he doesn't rest, sleep, bro. He doesn't sleep. It's like <laughs> nine o'clock at night. Thirty tries to hack in my Instagram account. Three a.m. He tries again. Seven a.m. He tries what is, again. What is the actual point? Uh, I think to steal my Instagram account. Yeah, but then what? You I, well, when they stole Dana's mom's Instagram account. Oh. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Yo, so Dana's mom. <laughs> Dana's mom. I don't know if she called Dana or what she did, but. Someone hacked her Instagram account. I remember. And they deleted all her posts and just started uploading hardcore porn. Like hard like, porn. Yeah, like double penetration yeah. gifts. Like it was pretty intense. I signed on and I was like, oh my <laughs> and the same thing. It's like what what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. Cause they were trying to get you to like click the link below and go to some weird but site, what? but like why would you ever click the link? Yeah, I don't know. But some people out there just aren't there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like my mom right now. Why? The coronavirus has her... Um, I think it's got everyone. So I think there's... Well, I think there's two different... I think there's three different kinds of people, right? Usually there's two. I'm, I'm curious to see what your third type is. Um. Okay, so there is people like my builder today who... Okay. Can I tell you how much I fucking loved that? Because... So I think the way that I operate, that... I'm trying to figure out what to do, but you know I don't say what I mean all the time. Right. Right? So, like, when I want to respond to somebody, um, I pause and I'm like, okay, cool. I want to get my point across, but I have to be polite. I don't want to be a dickhead. I, you, know, I, I, you know, I don't want people to seem like I'm a, the, uh, some cocky asshole or whatever. So then I, I, I craft my words and I get my point across, but I sort of softballed a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but dude, our builder came in today. That was a great. I've and, never met him before. And I was like, "Hey, man, do you want to like? What do you do? Do you like knock feet together? Because we mm-hmm. can't shake hands anymore." Yeah. He's like, "No, I shake hands." I was like, "All right, bro, we'll shake hands." Mm-hmm. So I shook his hand. I was like, "You're not worried about getting the virus?" He's like, "No, I've already decided I'm not going to get the virus. I only get things I want to get. I've already made a decision. I'm not going to get it, so I'm not going to get it. Not worried about it. Moving on." L- like, word Whoa. for word, that is, was his delivery. And then all. he tried to show us a, a meme that his son made. Mm-hmm. Which I loved that he didn't know it was a meme. He's like, my son makes these things images with, with words. images with words. But like, I think there's people like that. I think there's people that are just like, no, the coronavirus, fuck that. Not going to get it. Even if I do, I'm not a fucking bitch. Not worried about it. Going about my business. Okay. Do you think you're in that category? <clears throat> no. Okay. No, I don't think I am. Um, because, okay, so so that's the one kind of person. Right. The one kind of person is just like, fuck it. This shit's a hoax by the government or this shit. I'm not worried about it, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I think they're like the, they're a little out of control in that sense. Yeah, yeah. And then there's people like my mom 
who my mom is just like living in absolute fear. Uh She's reading every news article and she's like, the bodies are piling up in the streets and everyone's going to die and say goodbye to your kids. And it's like, Jesus, fuck, what's wrong with you? So I think there's those people. And, and that's every news article from any source. Any source, any dude. Blog, they're like vlog, vlog, Tumblr, anywhere. She doesn't understand. Like Well, it's harder for that generation to sort through that, that you can't just put anything on the internet. Yeah. She she thought that I, I remember when um we started to talk about we talked about pandemics. My original shirt, um, when the time comes there will not be enough people to bury the dead was yeah. her quote. She was right. acting the same way about bird flu uh eight years ago. Okay. Right. And I remember she's like, no, I saw it on the internet. I was like, yeah, but mom, that doesn't mean anything. You can put anything on the internet. She's like, no, no, you, what do you mean? And I was like, wait, do you think everything that goes on the internet is true? Mm -hmm. She's like, well, yeah, there's has to be some kind of vetting process. Like sort of how like back in the day to put something in a book, it had to go through a publishing house and it had to be correct. Yeah. She thought the same thing about the internet. I don't know if she still does. You want to know what one of my favorite like pranks and jokes was uh, in college? What was when I learned HTML and yeah. CSS, I would go on to ESPN.com and pull up the source code and then change the headlines of the articles um, and like the images and then reload the page with my source code. <laughs> so I would call people over. <laughs> I remember I did something so vulgar the one time and uh, it was about like college basketball team and this girl uh, that I'd worked with and told her, I was like, did, did you see this article on ESPN? And it came up and it was about like all these basketball players and like how they attacked her and like all this shit. And she was like, how's that out there? Oh my God. But like, go, like going all crazy. And it was just like having fun with the code and no, no one was harmed, Yeah, but it's very easy to just put shit on the internet. Yeah. 100%. And you can even just put shit nowadays with like blogs and mm-hmm. Tumblr and all that shit. You can put real stuff on there. Why is your pillow? See, I don't have a pillow. You have a pillow. Oh, my pillow's pushing into my mic. Uh, I was, I don't know. You sponsored our furniture and you made it very comfortable. In here. I dude, every time. So every time I buy a house, I move all the old furniture out mm-hmm. and I, so I, I'm making like big moves, but I still have really small move mentality, right? Like you're saving So shit. like a big move would be like buy the house. All right, get all that shit out of here. I never want to see it again. And then buy all new furniture yeah. and like bam. And I'm the kind of guy who's like, yeah, I just bought this house. We should probably save all this furniture, even though it's ugly, just in case I need it for something. Yeah. I'm like a low key hoarder. Yeah, I mean, you're smart about but it. But now we have pillows and lamps. Yeah, and... I'm fucking chilling. This is yeah. sick. There's like paintings. So what's the third type of... Because I'm waiting to see where I fall. So the third type is the rational person in the middle. So that's me and you. So it's like the person <laughs> that... Yeah. It's the person that's like, hey, listen. No, one, I don't want to get sick. Right. Because I have way too much shit to do. Yeah. I'm not scared of it. Like, I don't think... I'm not going to die. Yeah. But... I also realized that, like, if I get it, then I'm going to give it to Dana. And, like, Dana's still low-key recovering from rhabdo last year. Like, uh-huh. so she has some things going on. And then, like, I don't know, maybe my mom could get it. And what if Drew got it or you got it? And, like, realizing yeah. that, like, I could slow it on production of the whole warehouse. Yeah. So I'm being pretty safe, you know? Being cautious. I'm being very cautious. Being I'm not going to stores I don't need to go to. Right. I'm still... I am supporting all the local restaurants. Like I'm ordering a shitload of to-go food. Yeah. Um, and depending how much longer this might, this might go on, I think I might end up buying gift certificates to all. Cause I heard that's I a good that. way to do it. Yeah. 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 So like, um, I got to check my finances, but figure out like if I do look all local restaurants or something, buy like hundred dollar gift cards, yeah. or even if I gave them out to you guys or whatever, but hell yeah, I know. Right. And I got to pay you back for this kombucha, bro. <laughs> okay, but I think those are the three people. It wasn't okay. seven ninety nine. You ever paid for it? You were just trying to get out of there because that guy was coughing on you. Yeah, it was creepy. So I think those are the three people: okay. the completely maniac people that aren't worried about anything. Which I low key like those guys. Yeah, I like them a lot. Um, if I had to lean to a side, I like those people. Well, I think there's like a little bit of that in you, probably. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. It depends what kind of mood you catch catch me in. Yeah. Like if you, I'm pretty mellow right now. But if you would have caught me like. Three hours ago, I probably would have been like on on that level. Yeah, when the builder was hyping you up. Like, yeah, <laughs> he had me all that. fired You're up. Right. I was like, yeah, fuck, this is America. <laughs> um, and then there's the crazy people like my mom, and then there's people in the middle like us that are rational human beings. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I'm taking precautions, mm-hmm. but at the same point in time, I'm, I like 
a lot of the shit that I'm doing now, the this is just giving me an excuse. Like, oh, no, I'm going to chill in on the weekend and play Call mm. of Duty. It's like, oh, no, I got a reason now. So it has. So I, I'll go over how it restructured my life, and then we'll talk about work. Right? Yeah, because And I then think, I sort of yeah. want to get into the economy, too. I don't want to dig too deep into the economy. I'm interested in that. Okay. okay. So I think let's start with um, how it's affected my life. So I go on a lot of trips. Yeah. And I go on so many trips now that – I think I take a lot of them, not for granted, but I don't see them for what they are. You know what I mean? So like, I forget what trips I have canceled, but I I, I was away. Every, I was away every single weekend. Yeah. Well, you were supposed to be in the studio. I'm in the studio today. I you think this is a studio be, yeah. day, which like I was, I was excited for that, but my, my excitement curve on the graph curve of excitement, I don't get <laughs> excited anymore. Right. So I, I it's like, I, I don't allow myself to get too high or too low. What do you think? You think that's just cause it's years of travel? Uh, so I think, I think it's one, it's like overstimulation of too many years of travel. Cause people hear travel and they just think like, awesome. well, yeah. And do the same thing. Like I, I, I remember being super excited about it. And now yeah. it's just like, well, no, it's my job. That's what I do. Okay. I do. I do these things. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one thing is I don't get too excited about things and I don't, I try because I, one thing about me is like, if I go too high, I eat, I come as equally far as down. Low, yeah. So like, you know, if we do like a big, re- it happens on like, for example, like a Black Friday. Yeah. Like there's all that build up for Black Friday and I'm so pr- proud of all this shit and then it sells and then it's sort of like, oh, mm-hmm. like I don't know what I was expecting, but like for some reason I, I, I rested my whole life on today yeah. or these five hours and now I feel like empty inside and I do when I crash, I crash fucking hard mm-hmm. and like, I don't know if you guys see it from that perspective, but I'm like a fucking yeah, yeah. disaster. So, um, I, I just don't get too. I try to stay as mellow as I can and realize that like everything's always going to be okay. And like, yeah, I just try to float pretty level. So, but the weird thing is everything's canceled right now. Mm-hmm. So I just, my next two months is like wiped out just clean, like all the expos, all the everything. Yeah. It's a really, it's weird. I, I don't miss traveling right now, but I'm, it's, it, it is restructuring my life and like, is that like the biggest toll you've seen it take, like the current state of everything, like on your daily living? On my daily travel? living, yeah. I, there's obviously no toilet paper. Yeah. But then outside <laughs> of that, the only thing I really miss is restaurants. But yeah. I've been ordering to go to try to support them. That makes me think of something that I have to ask you about later. We could do it on yeah, the we can, podcast. Yeah, we'll get it later. Yeah, yeah. You, you probably know what I'm I know, thinking. I know. So I, I did two days. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, that that's the biggest thing. And then also... It's it's creeping into our business a little bit. Start starting to, and I picture it coming in a little bit harder. Here so soon. yeah, and that's the thing is I think we're right at the beginning of this, yeah. and I think that so pretty much what we're doing. Unfortunately, the East Coast we just had to close the gym. That happened a while ago. Yeah. So that and once again, that's like we had to shut down the gym. And that wasn't our choice. That was every. No, that's the fucking yeah. government. Yeah. So um, a lot of people were all emailing or DMing in and it was like, no, the government is making us. Yeah. The government, it's literally whatever the rules are over there just had to close. So, and once again, like I do, I don't fucking know. Like that's just a weird thing. Like I can float that for one month. I think I can float that, that thing. But like, dude, if we go two months with the gym, like unless I influx, I don't know. $17,000 $17,000 of my own money, mm. like, well, I don't, whatever. Yeah. So anyway, but there's tons of businesses all over the place like that, you know? So the other thing that hit us was I'm doing this Airbnb thing. Mm-hmm. And literally all of our reservations canceled. But so there was like a week where everything canceled. And I was like stressed because, Panicking. I mean, the lake house is being renovated right now. Right. And dude, that fucking mortgage is $8,500 a month. Like, fuck me. So like all the other Airbnbs are going to end up, the extra is going to pay for that place Covering while it, yeah. it's getting renovated until it can do the summer. So the biggest thing I ran into right away was like, oh, cool. My whole Airbnb little empire <laughs> just got destroyed. Yeah. But then what happened? I don't know if you heard this. I guess people thought to themselves, ooh, if I need to self-quarantine and I can't I work, heard, yeah. I should just rent out a cabin in Montana for mm-hmm. two weeks. So all of a sudden, I just got these two-week bookings, two-week bookings. So everything worked out, yeah. which I'm really pumped about because that was that scared me. Yeah, when I first heard that come up and someone request that for that reason, I was like, whoa, that person's really poor. I mean, thinking. if you're thinking like, about it, dude. Hell yeah, good right? for them. Like, 
So the Airbnb thing's going well. Um, Flag nor fail, run everything, all the brands so, in the warehouse. Yeah. Creative staff is working from home. That's the big, yeah. So the big changes we made at the warehouse was we made the call to have, have to take it into our own hands, things that we could control, control. So creative staff is fully capable of working from home. So of course, work from home. Um, a lot of them have kids or elderly uh, fam- family and stuff like that. And then warehouse uh, workers were running in shifts so that there's not more than two people in the back at one Yeah, time. so we're doing wipe downs. And then there's sort of like an east wing and a west wing of our yeah. warehouse. Oh, yeah, so we have like but... one work working in one wing, one working, and then they switch halfway through. Yeah. Um, Customer service is on the computers. Like we're still shipping at, on normal schedule. We're still yeah. packing on a normal schedule because of the uh, the way we're loading all the warehouse workers in the back. Like on their time schedules. Like yeah. We're still getting orders out timely. We're still doing everything we were doing. Yeah. The other thing that we're trying to do is like, now we're trying to figure out like what our online shopping pattern is going to look like. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, that's the thing that can't be predicted. So like our people, cause I think we're two weeks away from people sort of realizing pausing. Yeah. Like if we're in quarantine or whatever the hell this is, stay at home. Mm-hmm. If this goes on another two weeks, there's a lot of businesses that, are paying their people to sort of be off that yeah. might say, Hey, listen, it's been a month now we can't. Mm-hmm. And that's where I'm really curious what's going to happen. Yeah. Cause, uh, the, so with the brands and I don't think you care if we cover this, but like with the brands, the way we've seen, or the, the way I've seen like the pattern is supplements are still going normal. Yeah. Um, because people are realizing or not realizing, but people view supplements as essential. I mean, the government said, Supplement companies, stuff like that, stay open, essential. Yeah. But then the clothing is people are realizing like, oh, I don't need this hoodie during this time. Yeah. And that's <laughs> I think that's one thing that bummed me out was the club tee we released. Yeah. So our first distressed item, that's something that I've been working on, like a side project for a long time. Yeah. We finally pushed it live. And dude, I love it. Like it's my, it's if I dress up, if I go out, like it's one of our most fashion forward items. Yeah. And not that it did bad, but it was definitely like, huh. Yeah, it's one of them things where like, I mean, whenever we release a new product or yeah, a promotion. It takes a little while for everyone to catch yeah, up. Yeah, it, it takes a little while and it's hard to put your finger on what exactly yeah. the pulse of it is. Well, I think right now, you know, people aren't buying new outfits. Yeah, it's, you know? it's actually, it is it is that simple. Yeah, it's that simple. I'm not buying new outfits right now. No, I'm, I'm shopping for a couple of things right now that I'm realizing like aren't super important, but. Are you going to say what you're shopping for? I'm shopping for a couple of things. Well, are you going to say what you're shopping I'm for? I'm in the market for a new Xbox headset. Oh, which it, well, fucking, I'm going no. on like the scale of things. Okay, just skip to the big one. Uh, the big one is upgrade in my vehicle. <sighs> All right, whatever, dude. That's I was looking to the, get a new Porsche. It's the most boring shit ever. An uh, upgrade in my new vehicle. <laughs> well, I don't want to sound like I'm just out here fucking balling during this recession. I'm it, No, I'm dude, you are fucking driving a super responsible. You're driving like one of the fucking hidden gems of the car world. The Cayman? A Cayman S, bro? Yeah. So I'm looking, I set a 2021 goal as a GT4. Shh. Is the next plan. Um, but I also want a Panna, which I could daily, and I want some other new things in my life. Wait, so. you're shopping for a Panna too? I'm shopping for, yeah, I'm on like them websites where you just click all the, <laughs> I'm on a watch website. All right, I like, I like you I'm got some a, goals. And I'm on a Porsche uh, forum all and right, I just so click all the stuff You're I just like. out here just, you're just balling out of control. Yeah, and then I just check it every day. All right. That's how like, well, this has all affected me in like a couple different ways because now I'm realizing, uh. Should I be shopping for these things during this weird time or should yeah. I be trying to figure out how to invest my money and play like the long ball? That's another thing that you and I have been talking about a lot is yeah. investing. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know. I don't so know I think, shit. So, okay. So I was really, really, and once it's super early to tell right now, uh-huh. right? But I was very worried about my investments. So my investments are, I, and you sort of know this, but I'll, uh-huh. I'll break it down for you. So. Um, I have some life insurance things going on, yeah. uh, for investments. I have 401k, you know, all, all those typical, typical things I've done. Yeah. Um, very minor for me. I'm, I'm, I, I don't like thinking like, Oh, when I'm 65, it's probably gonna die from the coronavirus way before then. <laughs> yeah. Can I might let joke about that. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure someone will be offended. All right. Well, if you're offended, please, e- <laughs> please email CS at, <laughs> all right. Um, 
so I, I have that. And then I also do the stock market. But uh-huh. that's not – the thing I don't like about the stock market is – uh, it's on average like eight to ten percent return yeah. annually, which is great. And the, but then you have to deal with shit like this, where just like everything's going away, and yeah. you and you have no control over it. I know how to make money. Right. You know how to make money. Yeah. And I think that I can make more money with my money than the stock market can. Yeah, of course. So what I do is I invest in yourself. Invest in myself. I invest every single month into the stock market. So pretty much I invest when it's high. I invest when it's low, and then it all just comes out super vanilla and boring and it all averages out to like, Oh, you're sort of making money. So every month I get a withdrawal. Uh, Tony invests it in the Mm -hmm. stock market. Um, during this time with everything crashing, I haven't even looked really. I have literally no fucking clue. So I'm the opposite. I have no, because dude, I'm trying to get in. Yeah. But if I figure it out, but if I looked in right now, you'd probably be a little, dude, I probably lost. (laughs) Uh, I'm probably down a lot. A I don't want to say how much I'm down, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm I'm down a house. Uh-huh. And nice house. <laughs> if I looked and I was like, oh, cool, I, I'm down a house. You'd panic. I would, I would I'd make irrational decisions. Yeah, and, which is and, what everyone's doing right But now. the whole, my whole plan with the stock market was, hey, listen, this is a long-term thing. Mm. I'm playing it safe. Um, so then I'm not checking right now. I checked in with Tony and Tony said, Hey, we're going to, we're going to hold off on buying right now yeah. because we're visibly on a way down, but we'll pick up when it levels back out. So stock market, um, what else am I doing? So Airbnbs are long term yep. for me. Um, and then all the businesses, mm-hmm. what was I, what was I telling you all this? My retirement, my, my finances going on right now. I think so. So feeling you know, online is interesting uh-huh. because another thing that we're running into is, okay, we're able to fill, uh, manufacturing slowed down a little bit, everything yeah. slowed down a little bit. And the other thing is we have less planes going out of here. Yeah. So like we pretty much what happens is we pack our packages. We're still packing them at the same rate. And then they, they come and pick them up and they literally drive them four miles over the airport and put them on airplanes. Mm-hmm. And now they're like slowly cutting back on airplanes. So, I don't, once again, don't know, but this goes back to how I've always fucking done things, which is if I don't have the money to buy it, don't do I it. don't fucking buy it. Yeah. So like, you know, I, and once again, it might sound like a fucking asshole, but I just want people to, to, to get it. There's, there's, there's different types of people. Most people out there you see with Lambos, they have fucking car notes on them. They're yeah. financed. Like sur- we're surrounded by what? A million dollars in 911s? We're literally surrounded by them. They're on we're, we're, so, so, yeah. So all the, I'm surrounded by all the garages, and they're all investment. Like So once again, I sound like a dickhead saying, oh, a million dollars in 911s around here. But like a 997 Turbo mm-hmm. I, that I bought for $70,000 fucking five years ago, paid for in full, is now worth $80,000. Yeah. And I'm not driving them all because I can't drive them all. I drive them when I can, but... They're not going down in value. It's just, it's the same thing as a bank. It's just holding my money. Yeah. It's just a lot more attractive than it being in a bank because yeah. I get to look at it every day. And then every once in a while I get to take it out. So once again, I don't like in a time like this where I'm like tightening up, I don't have all that overhead debt. Right. Same thing with the Airbnbs, except for this fucking lake house. But <laughs> I've, I wait until I can actually afford it. And then the renovations I do coincide with like how much money I have to renovate it. Right. And so a time like this one, all Airbnbs cancel. I'm like, okay, cool. I can float three months through realty and leasing and have no renters and still be sort of okay. Versus the other way that people do things, which is they do the second they start making money and they can, they can show that their business has some credit, they just fucking extend, extend, Send extend. It, yeah. And then you get in a situation like this where I don't, I don't, you just, <laughs> everything's falling apart and you don't have the money to fucking handle it. So. Yeah. I always battle with that because it's always like, oh, use other people's money when you can. You hear that all the time in the business world. And I always go against that, just following my heart with, no, if I can't afford it, I just work, 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 work work until I can afford it, which is the same reason we haven't broke ground on a new warehouse yet. Mm -hmm. Because like I'm low-key saving up to not have to finance that thing. 
We Granted, have the land for people that don't know. We have the land. Tell we them have, where we're at with that project. So we have, that's a huge project. The warehouse, the warehouse, once again, it's a... I'm in, we've never done this before. <laughs> no, we've always retrofit into yeah. old buildings, which work, because we can make anything work. That's... that's we can, yeah. We... <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got fire shots at people. I'm not firing shots. You're just, firing shots at people. No, I'm not. All right. No, so we can make anything work. We can make any office work. We can make any working. Like, we, dude, we could run Flagner Fail out of the backseat of your Tacoma. Yeah. 100%. We could show up every day, get in the backseat of your Tacoma, and we could fucking rip. Mm-hmm. And we could shoot it all on an we've iPhone. We've done similar. Yeah. We've done, like, similar experiences or uh, pr- uh, fucking experiments in the past. Not recently. But back when we were like in Leesport, we would do experiments like, hey, every, remember mm, for a yeah. while we'd be like, all right, every morning Rob and Austin, instead of coming to the warehouse, they meet, do cardio, go in the sauna, and then shower separately uh, <laughs> at the gym, and then they come to work at 1030. Whew. And then we went through a little period where we said every Monday and Friday we would work from your house. Mm-hmm. And just like this little period now where we're going through and there's not not saying distractions, but not just out when there's not outside noise. Yeah. Like I'm getting two days worth of work, three days worth of work and communication with like manufacturers and stuff like that done. I'm getting it done in like hours now. Yeah. And then being able like, I'm going to design Black Friday and like having like all this time for other stuff just because. Like, I mean, our creative meeting today. Activity. Yeah. I mean, even little things like the jacket, like we, so we got a final sample of a jacket in today mm-hmm. and then we sort of redesign the whole thing instantly. Instantly, even though this was sort of the final production sample, but it's because I think we were just, we felt lighter. Yeah. We felt like we had the ability, we had the bandwidth to do this because, uh-huh. you know, we're in a, a, a much more controlled environment. So anyway. The warehouse. The warehouse. I bought 10 acres on the highway. So we're going to split it. Um, I'm saving the front five acres for something. Yeah. That's going to be like my first big boy. Restaurant. Strip mall, something like that. Yeah. To where it's like. Once again, that's I'm not there yet, but mm-hmm. it's one of my future goals. It's one of those goals that like scares the shit out of me. But because, dude, think about it. We're gonna have to redo that road. Oh yeah. If we're gonna put a strip mall in there, we're gonna have to put a, a light in. I'm I gonna need to talk to everybody. The licensing and zoning. Oh, and dude, all it's gonna be heavy. crazy. And then like, you know, then it comes down to you know how I work. I'm not gonna build out buildings and then be like, okay, who wants to rent this? Yeah. Blah, blah blah. No, I'm gonna say. You know what we should have? We should have coffee. We should have uh, food. We should food. have a uh, Mexican restaurant. Health. We should have um, donuts. Mm-hmm. We should have like all the shit you like. All the shit shop. I like. We should have uh, yeah. Cloud Nine should franchise up there. <laughs> and then <laughs> what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna start this business my, myself. Yeah. And next thing you know, I'm just gonna be out of. But anyway, further down the line, we're splitting so ten it. acres. The back five acres, we're gonna build a building. So um, how many square feet? So we're going to go a little smaller. We're going to go 30,000 square feet. Um, I now think what it's, was our building uh, back in Leesport? Just for people that have been there. I think it was 38,000 square okay, feet. So a little bit smaller than that? A little bit smaller than that. But what we're going to do is we're going to lay uh, one, two, three. I think three extra pads yeah. for 5,000 square foot buildings. Okay. So the, one of the big things I learned about that building. So I owned a building in Pennsylvania. It was one of my big first purchases. It was right out of auction. Um, I bought it for 1.25 million Mm -hmm. and it was 38,000 square feet. It was huge. It was two stories. It's all, you see a lot of our old footage there. Yeah. A lot of them might have even been there. Yeah. You might've been there for the camps, dude. The building was awesome. Yeah. But when I went to sell the building, I couldn't sell it because it was too big of a building for everyone. And it's you know set up I mean? weird. And it, it was set up weird. There's these like two stories yeah. and like it wasn't really set up for manufacturing. It wasn't set up for offices. It was just a it weird. It wasn't set up for a car shop. No, no not, <laughs> nothing we had in it wasn't set up for. So it, it was just a weird building. And then in that area, like asking, I forget what I was asking. I think I started asking like 1.6 for it. Uh-huh. But no, just it was, it was. It was like the nicest house in the neighborhood, and it wasn't clear on what it was for. Yeah, yeah. So one thing that I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to build us a nice warehouse that we can be proud of, that we have all of the room. and Keep growing. We can grow and everything like that. <clears throat> but at the same point in time, thinking, dude, five years from now, we might be moving to a bigger warehouse. Who knows. fucking yeah. knows what we're doing in five years? 
that we don't have a five year plan. Yeah, we might we're, be moving to Arizona or something. You love Arizona. Well, you know why I love Arizona because I never actually like been there. To oh, you've never been there, it. so you just no, well, imagine. Been there on like adventure tour, but I here's what I imagine. All right, okay. let me paint this picture for you. I'm ready. Me, my GT4. Yeah. You, GT2. And okay. And then uh, we're just driving. So it's just me and you. And Drew. And uh, yeah, I mean, everyone, wait, what's Drew driving? Uh, who knows? Ooh. It's all right. up in the air. All right. And then we're just driving down the fucking desert, heading to TPC Scottsdale. What is that? It's a golf course. TPC. Oh, we're driving in the desert? We're driving like through the desert. Like on a road. Or oh, something. on a road. Okay. Like I just picture Arizona being really dope and warm and it not being cold. And oh, it's just always So being the opposite beautiful. of where you're at right now? Relatively. Okay. Relatively speaking. <laughs> all right. Um, and we're just and yeah. we're driving. Windows down? Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Of course. Drew's what do you probably got a convertible? What are you playing on your on your radio? I mean, if it's five years from now, who knows? You're playing Meek. Don't lie. I'm probably playing Meek or some uh-huh. old school like Kanye or something, uh-huh. and I'm All just right. enjoying myself. All right. And it's just the my hair. I probably got long hair at this point. In five braids. Years from now. No, probably not in braids. But I'm really <laughs> just enjoying. I can't. I went with braids to the golf course. Remember, I had my hair braided uh-huh. for a couple of days. Yeah. Like in the summer or whatever. Yeah. I went to the golf course like that. I felt really weird. Yeah. Um, so that now I have short hair. We have that's a very manageable. traditional golf course here. Yeah. Very traditional. Um, which that's how my life. Can we? Are we done about Wait, the building? So because wh- I want to get about how my life's about to be turned upside down. <laughs> so we're gonna build a, a thirty thousand square foot building. Yeah. Offices up front. Uh, inventory workspace in the back, and then we're also pouring the pads for the 5,000 square foot buildings. You, you left out the, my favorite part, or one of my favorite parts so of the building. So long term, if we decide to leave, mm-hmm. uh, I'll have different buildings I can lease out, like a little colony of buildings, like a little... Uh, compound. Uh, not a compound, a little uh, industrial park. Gotcha. Yeah. One of my favorite parts about the building that we left out is a showroom. Oh. We never had one. Yeah, we've never had a foyer? Foyer? Yeah, I guess that so. we're uh, that we're super proud of. We've always just like walked through a weird door, and it's just like, oh, you're in the warehouse. Yeah. It's great. So we're we're actually taking a lot of time designing and building like, uh, I, yeah, I guess like a showroom to enter where yeah. it's like hang out. Uh, we'll be able to ho- like if we do host like party a cocktail party hey. or something like that. I don't fucking know, bro. And you can park your GT4 inside. Let's go uh, during the winter is like a show car. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, that's yeah, the that's the big part. I, I think that'll be dope because that does a couple of things. I think it gives a good first impression for every anyone yeah. entering the building that yep. doesn't know the brand. And then I think the one thing that it does is for people that do know the brand, um, or like employees and stuff like that, it really sets the tone. Like you work in the you walk into the building and you're just like proud of what you're saying. Yeah, in. yeah. And one of my favorite things was when the original plans came back from Jamie. He was conscious of what he put on all the televisions. In the, uh, Very conscious. And do you remember what it was? No. It was Tiger Woods. Oh. Sinking a putt. He knows you all the, too well. Sinking a putt to win the aim, Masters aim, last year. You took that photo, didn't you? Aim, no, the, no, just, the just turn the mic head. Aim it at your mouth. It's broken. No, this thing here. Here we go. There you go. Oh, fuck. All right. You're the, the one who broke it. All right, I'm just going to stop touching stuff. I'll order one on Amazon as soon as we're done. All right. I want a headset so I can feel like it. What you say, an astronaut? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean... If you want so uh, that's the building. That's exciting. how is your life going to be turned upside down? So well, my life already has. How? Because all the shit, by COVID nineteen, all the shit I'm looking forward to is slowly getting canceled. I had a bunch of shit I was really looking forward to this summer. Like what? Uh, on on a chronological timeline wise, I've been dieting since last fucking. <laughs> oh, I forgot about since that. last March to compete. <laughs> You've been dieting for a year. I've been dieting lit- <laughs> literally for Bro. over a year. I started dieting last March. Today's oh what? March 30th? God. Um, You've been dieting a year. Yeah. I dieted it through. No, granted, when I say I dieted, I'm not like some crazy. Uh, I-, I find it pretty easy just because I feel like I'm in a good mental space and I count macros and I'm like really good at it. Um, so I dieted it through Thanksgiving. When we had Thanksgiving at your house this year, I tracked mm-hmm. everything I ate. Um, I'm good at it to the point where like people around me don't know I'm counting macros yeah. or tracking. I'm like, yeah, I could eat that. And I'm just conscious of what I ate before, what I eat after, and I've been ballparking it long enough. Uh, so I, I, through Thanksgiving, through Christmas, which for Christmas this year, I went back to Philly for seven days, um, <sighs> which that was like, 
I don't want to say torture because I don't like making it seem like it's a uh, like I'm saving the world or anything. Yeah. Because in my head, I'm choosing to do this, so I'm not going to bitch about it. Um, Once again, you're firing shots at everyone who does competitions. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I died it through Christmas, and then I'm like fucking set. I'm seven weeks out, and I get the news that all NPC shows are canceled. Uh, well, and what, I'm not too mad about what's it. What's another year out, bro? Yeah. I mean, at this point. I'm not too mad about it because I'm in shape for the summer and I'm going to keep dieting and my glutes are finally coming in. So we're going to push another Your glute. When do we get... I have a photo on my phone. I, I w- was going to send it to you and Drew. Yeah. I'm like butt naked. Um, from oh, the so Ronnie style. Y- yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and I was going to send it this weekend, but I'm going to wait for it to be like a little bit better before I send that out. Into Dana, the, into did you hear that? He's trying to say his striated glutes. No, no, no. I'm trying to He say, just called out Flex Lewis I'm, just now. I didn't say Flex's name. I didn't say anyone. I said I'm close to striated glutes. I am. What do you think about that, I'll Jay? show you right now. Do it. No, the lighting's not good enough uh-huh. in here. Okay. We'll he has, get the spotlight on. Oh, you spotlight. guys stay tuned for that part. So spotlight. That's the first thing that's been affected. Yeah. The next thing is, no, from the coronavirus canceled my comp. He has yeah. coronavirus in his butt right my, now. <laughs> my Jeff anus. My it. bungus now has <laughs> CV-19. What's it called? COVID? You, you can, so that's the first thing that was messed up. Yeah. Next is my birthday's coming up, which I don't. I, I didn't have plans for my birthday. My anyway. birthday's coming up, too. I'm not even worried about it. Yeah, I, I didn't have plans. But then... You ready? My bachelor party? That was like oh, super brocation. Fuck. That was like all I was looking forward well, not all I was looking forward to, but I was really looking forward to it. Yeah. And now like I don't fucking know. Earlier I said when I I, I wasn't looking forward to anything, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Well I had forgot about it because I don't know what the fuck oh, to think. Oh man. Now. And then my wedding is in August. Yep. Which I, I don't want to be one of them guys who's like, oh, it'll be all cleared up by then, because I don't watch the news, I don't fucking know. But my wedding's in August and my entire family, her entire family is coming in from the East Coast. So, like, how's that going to be affected? They're going to bring the virus over. Well, I'm thinking, worst case scenario, there's just going to be fucking a dozen of us at Worst my case house. scenario, we're all dead. It wor- yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. You can't say worst case scenario and not actually say the worst case. Well, so, like, second to worst case is not everyone makes it, and then we just have a smaller wedding. Which, the wedding's going to be small anyway. Um, but the bachelor party? No. <laughs> Is your dad coming to that? I'm going to fucking snap out if the bachelor. You're going to snap out? Yeah, but I've never had. Can you explain to everyone? So can I've you never, explain to everyone what uh, your, so, so your bachelor party. So I've never been to Vegas outside of work. I've yeah, been, you're, to, I've been you're, to Vegas probably, I don't know. I think when they're thinking about bachelor party, they're probably picturing something different. Yeah, booze, heavy drugs, and strippers. That's not my bachelor party. The booze <laughs> is. Go. Uh, so I've never <laughs> been to Vegas outside of work. I've probably been to Vegas a dozen times, but it's always been for working this convention for a week, working that convention for a week. Yeah. This is the first time I'm going with like a bunch of bros, and it's just it's not for work. It's for fun. <sighs> so th- what I said when we were trying to figure out the top two places for the bachelor party was Arizona and Vegas. And I said I didn't want to do Vegas because I didn't want it to just be the typical bachelor party. Yeah. And then what my brother had said, my little brother, who's my uh, best man, was like, it's only typical Vegas if you make it typical Vegas. And it's I was true. Like, you know what? You're right. So we plan to just go down there, uh, golf, hang out, hit some pool parties, whatever, but not worry about like, oh, we have to get a strip club. We have to go to this crazy thing. We have to go. To it's literally just going to be like a chill weekend. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just, totally down for that. Yeah. I'm like super pumped for it because yeah. I've also never been on a golf trip anywhere. So like knowing that we're going there like just for golf. Bro, we went on the Pebble out. Beach. Oh, that wasn't. We didn't play we didn't, golf. We didn't play. We just uh, went to watch. Um, but that's at the end of June. I don't know what to do now because the, the airfare. So what happens with our flights haven't changed. Um, my brother's flying out of Philly. One of them was leaving in the morning. One of them was leaving in the afternoon. Their flights have been combined. And then I had, I don't know at what point I reach out to the Airbnb guy to be like, yo, bro, how are you handling all this? I think we're like still far enough out. I'm just hoping it doesn't get canceled and we can make something happen because if not, I don't know what we're going to do. And I'm just trying to have a good time. Man, your life is ruined. Pretty much. Are they opening golf courses? So, um, uh, Buffalo Hills was supposed to open this weekend and have some of it play, but they, the governor or mayor or whatever, yeah. um, put out the thing. Governor. The, the governor put out the thing, so they closed down. Um, 
what a lot of courses are doing, like what I heard Whitefish is doing, which is where I'm a member of, is, and you're a member of. Um, I didn't buy my pass yet. Yeah, we're gonna get you and Drew to hook up. What's the, what, what do you mean? We're just gonna don't pay say for no, it. don't say no. No, oh. there isn't a hookup. We're just. Are you just gonna? Use I meant my, like I'm gonna set it up. You're just gonna use my credit card and pay for me, and then yeah, tell yeah. me I got to hook up. Yeah, I, yeah. I like things much better when I feel like I get special treatment. So okay. Let's yeah, just I'll hook you like, up. Thanks, um, bro. So what I heard they were doing was, and no one take this the wrong way, but I love what I heard they were doing, which is members only. Oh. Which is dream come true for Bro, me members only on the weekend is just well, we've already eliminated most of the people that come down to play that course because we get a lot of people from Alberta, Calgary. It's a lot of and Canadians. they lock down the border. It's so the <laughs> so Canadian boom. Good. Build that fucking wall Done. up there. Members only. Yes. And then uh, walking only. Which you might what? not like. What? I might be out. But I, <laughs> so I. So but wait, wait, wait. That's wait. all I do is walk. So, so no Canadians. Correct. But I have to walk. Yeah. Well, I'm only going to bring an nine iron then. That's fine. See, for me, this is dope because when I go. Oh, I, you got a cart. I got I have uh, a little push cart and I right. only walk anyway. Um, and then members only obviously cuts it back. And then for anyone that doesn't know, I don't know why you would know unless you've been here before. Uh, Whitefish Lake Golf Course is 36 holes. So, like, it should be really spread out if they do end up opening. So, wait, I... Okay, so I drink heavy when yeah. I golf. Uh -huh. And you know my curve. Start out really bad, <laughs> and then I get I get oddly good. Yeah. Like, uh... Remember like that whole, time you, you birdied hole seven by yourself, yeah, the one that were whole, playing scramble? Hole five to, like, nine? Uh -huh. I'm like, wow. Yep. I'm getting good at golf. And then... Uh, hole 10 cart girl comes around Cart girl comes around I'm like you know what i've been doing these little bit of little bit of vodka shots and they're making me better at golf so of course if i did a, another double right now uh -huh. i'll get even better and then it's hole 10s where you can hit uh hole 10s the dog leg right 250 yards yeah big tree in the so <clears throat> at that point in time i'm, I'm feeling pretty confident and i'm like all right i could either go a straight a straight 150 safe play safe or play or i can try to sh sh fucking send it to the moon over those trees uh -huh. and then i send it over the fucking moon yeah and then it normally it normally hits that building over there but uh, you always have fun when we go out golfing. i always have a great time dude yeah i, I wish we, we we could get you out there more well this new rob bailey oh i don't know what that means oh okay i thought there was like gonna be no i think i need to start um looking at life different a little bit. I'm trying to tweak my perspective on life. Is it because of everything happening happening right now? No. Or just like in general? I'm trying to define progress at the moment. Okay. So I haven't talked to anyone about this, but I'm trying to define what my progress is. Because, you know, we're, we're running these brands, we're doing these things, but I feel like I'm at a, a certain level right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so even if, say, Flagner failed doubled in sales, okay, run everything doubled in sales, mm -hmm. uh, if all these things happened, right, um, even, like, the other project that I have going on down south, like, that launched off, and even if that, like, blew up, uh -huh. um, eh, eh, I'm still, like, generally on the same level, right? Uh, what do you mean by It depends. Just on the same level. I'm, I'm still within I'm, – I, I haven't – I feel like I haven't graduated – so like, oh, Rob's on that next level now. Yeah, but the, uh, I think if you look back and you no, look... Hold on. Okay, go ahead. But you know what I mean? Yeah. You, okay. can, you can agree. You can say something to make me feel better and say that I'm improving and this, that, and the other, right? No, I... That's not what I'm looking for. So, okay, go ahead. What I'm saying is I'm... It's progress, but it's like these small steps of progress. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like I look at someone like... <clears throat> Oh, who do I look at? Who's who's like really doing like Heavy D, right? Okay. So like Heavy D's like oh he's he's on a certain level. It's like TV show, uh, fucking doing all these things, blah blah blah. Speaking Diesel, engagements. Speaking engagements, setting up these little and like even that the Heavy D Academy, it was like on the same level. Yeah. Like it was, it's all on this like certain level, and then all of a sudden he was like, I'm launching a new electric truck. Yeah. That's better than the Tesla truck, and I was like, oh. He just graduated to another level. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that on my list right now, progress rise for my own sanity, building the warehouse, even starting restaurants. If I start a vegan donut shop, if mm -hmm. I started whatever the fuck I do, coming out with my metal album, that's available on April 30th. Hey. Um, so all these things, I, they're still just on my same level. They're the normal things that I'm doing. 
I'm doing them better. I'm doing them on a larger scale, but they're not putting me up to that next level of shit. Okay, I see what you're saying. So my big thing, my big worry, and I'm not feeling it, but it's creeping up on me right now, is I need to do something bigger. Okay. So like my whole life revolves around progress and like physically I'm progressing and like mentally I feel like I'm progressing and I'm slowly progressing, but like I'm still on the same yeah, level, yeah. you know what I mean? So like I can do this jump around shit in the gym and get balance all day long. But like if I'm not jumping over a car soon, then I'm really just like balancing on a fucking BOSU ball and like I can touch my toes, yeah. right? <laughs> like it's all the same shit until you jump over a car. Uh-huh. And then after you jump over a car, you need to be able to do like a standing backflip. And like yeah. you, there's levels to this shit. And I feel like I'm just not – I don't have anything lined up that takes me to that next level. And I'm worried about my mental state, um, which affects everyone else. Oh, yeah. You know, like unfortunately everyone's dictated by fucking stupid Rob. Uh-huh. So one thing that I saw happen that I've been thinking about, and it really sparked this, was Aubrey Marcus, uh-huh. uh, the CEO of Onnit, stepped down from Onnit, yeah, or stepped away, whatever the f- whatever, how, however yeah. you word that. He was like, "Hey, I'm no longer CEO. This new dude CEO." Uh-huh. Um, and I remember just thinking, like, "Well, that's wild." Like closing a chapter of your life and then moving on to something else. I don't even know what he's moving. I don't even know. I don't know anything about the dude yeah, really. Yeah. I re- I listened to his his book once, and then that's it. But I just made the rest up in my head. Mm-hmm. And what I'm trying to do now is figure out what my next big level is, right? Yeah. So my next level could be, say, everything doubles and blah, blah, blah. And financially, fucking business-wise, all these things that I'm doing, I'm still on the same level generally. Like, I'm not coming out with a fucking company that's trying to go to head-to-head with Tesla. Mm-hmm. But – maybe I'm looking at everything completely different and that's my new yeah. level. So like I can go golfing and not feel guilty right, right. or gotcha. whatever, whatever that means. Like I think Dane and I took our first vacation this year, mm-hmm. which like to me, that was sort of like another, uh, some kind of progress heading to another level where it was like, no, I'm celebrating an album release by going to Mexico yeah. and I feel validated and I feel like I should be able to do that. Uh-huh. So I don't know, man. I think I, I think I think if you were an outsider looking at your life, don't care about that. You do. You don't. Don't I, care. I think you don't realize the progress. Don't because care. you're buried in it. Huh? And I, I think don't care. You're, but you're. I hate. There's nothing I hate more than when when you when you say, oh, but but, but an outsider looking in or like yeah, for anyone and, else, this would be. It's be, like no, but I'm not. Fucking, I hold myself at a different standard. Yeah. So, like, don't compare me because I'm not going to compare myself to this outsider. Uh-huh. Not going to do it, dude. Okay. Not going to do it. I just don't see how. It's like when people are like, oh, but Rob, you look really good for 36. And it's like, fuck you. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to look really good for a vegan so at you, 36. you don't think you've made progress in the last five years? I have. Okay. I have. And you don't think none of it was like. And next level, bigger stuff. I mean, we, we moved everything to Montana. We're into the cut and sew game. Like, granted, everything is getting better, mm-hmm. but I'm still on the same level. You, right. So you see it more so, I think, what you're. I'm trying to get ahead of myself having a fucking mental breakdown soon. Yeah, but I think what you're saying is the level that you're on, you're on the same level, but a lot of people, and the way like I would perceive it is. You're on a different level because you're doing a lot better and everything's more upgraded. Mm -hmm. When you're saying like, because I look at it like five years ago, you had a bunch of trucks that didn't work and supers that were always in the shop. Um, No real estate in comparison to what Mm -hmm. you have out here. The business we only had Flagner fail. Oh no 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 no! no. Like yeah, that's what I'm trying to get across is like, not forget the outsider thing. Whatever this fucking microphone. Um, I think anyone looking at it is like. How's this dude that is inspiring me saying in the last five years he hasn't completely hit a different level? Like, no, I get you know that. What I mean, I, I I understand that. Yeah, I'm granted I'm in completely different shape than I was five five years. Ago, I was three hundred pounds, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I, eh. you know, I think the other thing is like I just don't I don't see that giant big next step. I yeah, like to get to the next level. Well, I think that the whole next level thing that you keep quoting is yeah. is perception. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, like, if if I'm 
you, if I'm me and mm. I'm looking at you and we wipe away everything and we just say, let's just take like an asset, like the Porsche. And I'm like, five years ago, Rob had a Supra that wouldn't turn on. Now he's a G2, GT2 RS. That's next level. But your perception of next level is you need to hit like this big, crazy new stride. We need to launch a new company that fucking competes with Coca-Cola or something. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Your next level. The oh, it's it's, it's not a it monetary is, thing. It's is, not. Is, yeah, it's it, it's a move. The monetary. It's it's just different than how I would perceive you being next level and how I would perceive Joe Schmo down the street mm -hmm. hitting a next level. Like for someone, next level is all relative to that person. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying. To, I'm tr what I'm trying to do right now is define my next level. Right. You know, like because there's goal setting and things like that, mm -hmm. and I can't really find anything goal wise that big that I want to do. Like I want to buy a helicopter this year. Mm -hmm. I want to buy an airplane this year. I've been saying that for the last two years. I know I'm dragging my feet, but those are on my list. You know, there's, there's other things. Like, do you consider those next level or is that what you're trying to figure um, out? Not if I just buy them. Like right. if, if, if I got a helicopter, I don't think it's really next level. Cause right. a helicopter is like, eh, you know, cause you could go get one. Cause I yeah I could finance a helicopter tomorrow probably yeah. I, don't, I don't I don't know I'd have to you check have with the recently. check with the credit union but like I, but but like an airplane a, a decent airplane that could get me to places and then I'd have some kind of reason to be there and not just adventure tour but something else like yeah. a larger scale than adventure tour that would feel like a little more next level to me okay for. Yeah, I, I think minutes. before you have to, you're trying to get ahead of whatever mental thing you think you're, Yeah. then you have to define this next level. Because uh -huh. five years ago, if you would have said, hey, Rob Bailey, in five years, you're going to have all this shit. You're going to be building a new headquarters you, a in Montana. House. You're, building, you're building your own building for the first time. Yeah. You have all this shit. It, then it would, you have all these animals and your life is dope. Then you'd be like, whoa, that's next level. But now, since you've seen the growth, but I'm here now. You've actually been exactly. Yeah. You've actually been through it. You feel like nothing's changed. It's the same yeah. way, like well, no, if I, you're trying to lose weight, you look in the mirror every day. You're like, "Is it working?" And then you see someone you haven't seen in fucking two months, and like, "Holy shit, look at you!" And you're like, "What?" The, yeah, I lost twenty pounds. I look the same though. And they're like, "No, you fucking don't." It's because it, you're in it every day, so you you don't feel it as progress. But if you were to take a step back. Not even being an outsider, if you yourself took a step back. No, and like, I and I Whoa, agree. I hit a next level. And I agree. I'm just trying to get, I'm trying to get a, an understanding of like what the next next level is. Where do I go from here? Yeah, you know, um, that's and you know, once again, not even enough to talk to you about. You got to tighten this thing on the side, bro. I am. I keep this. We got twist this, it. This Use hunk your of junk. strong thumb. All right, we're good now. <sighs> so you just need to tighten it. A fucking user error. <laughs> I love user errors. So um, that's all. I'm just trying to work on that a little bit. Why okay. are we even here right now? What? How did we get here? I don't know. All well, right. I drove here. See what I did? And then I bought you that fucking kombucha for $13. I drank it all already. You drank it and threw it on the floor, which was like the most aggressive thing ever. I, I gently can, I, can I ask you about what t what's our time? What time are we at? It doesn't matter. We, the podcast lost as long as I want. Can, what do you want to ask me about? Your experiment last week? You did not want to talk about that on air. I can talk about that. My you experiment. Sure? You're making it I, sound like I did some I don't want to bring it up. If you don't want to talk um, about it. So, all right. So let's go. I'm bringing over. it up because I thought it was interesting. All right. So a little backstory. What happened? Um, I was doing really good. So I've been taking progress photos. Yeah. Every morning after I train, I take a progress photo of my underwear in the same lighting and whatever. And progressively over the month, over a month of doing it, I saw change. Right. And right now, I'm not losing size on my upper body, but my upper body's not really changing that much. Okay. The one thing that's changing for me is my core. Yeah. So my core, my legs, my legs are like, I know. my legs are completely different mm -hmm. and I don't squat. I don't train legs. I'm just jumping around like an idiot. Fast and like twitch fiber. my legs are like growing. They're always vascular. Like my ass is added an inch. Like they're just, I, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. You know, I, I haven't enjoyed anything like this in a, in a long time in regards to my body. And then I'm, my core is coming together. So for a month, and then Jake came dun, dun, dun. to do the uh, experiment. To, yeah, to do the 28 <laughs> days of content and to see how a con having a content creator working full time what for, for me would be. Um, and I, I just, dude, it was so much. Like there was yeah. just so much movement that I just, my diet, I just stopped paying attention. And then. 
so for a while I just wasn't eating enough. And then I started eating too much right. and just be like, fuck it. I'll just eat, 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 eat. And then this coronavirus fucking showed up. So I've been at the house more and I'm just like, oh, just fucking eat a bagel. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I eat a bagel with peanut butter and it's like delicious. And I'm like, well, I'll just eat another one. And before you know it, my progress photos are starting to reverse Reflected, and I'm starting yeah. to get like soft again. So I took a progress photo the other day. I looked at it. I was like, damn, like I'm almost back to where I started. Like, I just don't, uh-huh. what, what the fuck am I doing? I'm back up to, I was 257 the other day. Like there was a time when I was 244 yeah, and now I'm back up to 257. Ugh. So I woke up and I decided, Hey, you know what? I need to get myself under control. Um, I don't want to f- like completely fast, like a crazy person, mm-hmm. but maybe I could do seven days of just protein powder and juice and <clears throat> everyone misinterpreted what I was doing. Uh, every- when you say everyone, I think you're coming at me cause no, I'm the you, only person you told, uh, Dana, <laughs> Dana did, and uh, yeah, so everybody sort of missed. They were like, "Oh, you're not fat. Don't fast. Yeah, I, I That's not going to work." Yeah, I had you bring it up because I like the reasons. Why okay, so it. once again, my, my juices are vast. Like, dude, yeah. there's a fucking radishes. Uh, there's so much stuff in my juice. Carrots, there's there's everything. like eight to ten different vegetables yeah. in my juice. So like, I'm fine. I'm getting everything I need from that. Yeah. yeah. So what I was doing, I was doing juice three times a day. I was doing two grapefruit a day, my grapefruit with, uh, that was like my treat, grapefruit, um, flaxseed, um, hemp hearts, uh, chia seed, and then on grapefruit. And that's just yeah. delicious. So once again, that's like 36 grams of protein in that meal. I was doing that twice a day, grand high in fat, don't care. The rest of my shit was juice. Yeah. And then uh, once again, the juices, I think they, I, they came out to like 250 calories once again, mostly carbs with a little bit of protein. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was doing two shakes a day, which each shake was 50-50. So I was getting 200-ish grams of protein. But my big thing was I just wanted to limit what I ate. Yeah. And I just wanted to say like, oh, no, I'm home. Right now I can either have a grapefruit or I can have protein. Yeah. It wasn't about macros. It wasn't about anything else. It was just about setting guidelines for myself. And, sticking to and just learning how to say no, just yeah. being like, Oh no, I'm done eating right now. And that's the thing I love about intermittent fasting is like at eight o'clock at night, you're just like, Oh, I'm hungry. Oh wait, but I'm in my fasting window. So I just don't get to eat until two o'clock tomorrow. Yeah. So I just wanted those rules for myself. Um, so day one went pretty smooth. I mm-hmm. mentally at the end of the day, I was like, why am I doing this? But there's no, literally no fucking reason. I'm making up the rules. I should right. change that, the rules. That's what I thought was like funny. So the cool it. thing was I got through that day, which is the whole thing that I wanted to overcome. And then, uh, the next day I got through the whole entire next day. The thing that really fucked me up. And the reason I only did two days is because, um, my workout Friday morning sucked, just sucked. Oh. Like Dan was like, what are you doing different? Like you, you just seem tired. You're like, I haven't eaten and I'm like, well, Wednesday. I'm on this juice diet. He's like, what juice diet? Uh, do you have a link to it? And I was like, well, no, I sort of made up my own rules. It's like juice and protein powder. So and you're like, like deficient on shit. And he's like, what? So what do you, are you starving yourself? And I was like, no, it's not fasting. I, I made it up myself. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I did it two days. Um, and then that night, Dan and I were at the house and I was like, Hey man, I just want to eat. Yeah. So I forgot what I ate, but I just, I, I think I had like, uh, a tofu meal, a meal from trifecta and it was great, but like, no, it was more just to challenge myself and limit. Grant only did two days. Very disappointing. Yeah. Well, it's not disappointing. I mean, you no. tried it. I think you had all the right. No, like, and then it helped me. I mean, it. the rest of the weekend I was, uh, I did order out. Um, some food, but, uh, from where, anywhere good, uh, backslope. Okay. I haven't eaten out in a hundred years. So I know, I know. So you're, bro, you're on it. You're on the other level. You've been dieting for a year. Over a year. Yeah. Do you want to tell people what we're going to do? I don't know. I actually, uh, I have in my notes that I, I want to talk to you about that. All right. Well, we'll hold that then. Yeah. I want to figure out exactly, uh, what we're going to do. The general thing of it is we're going to, uh, get some content for run everything. Yeah. Um, I think using you, yeah. Using me as a model, which should be fun. That way, at least like I diet it for a reason and I'm looking at it as like, I'm, so I'm going to, I'm finishing out the last, uh, two weeks of what we'll call prep. So essentially what I'm working with Paul Ravella and what we decided to do was, uh, instead of being seven weeks out, we pushed the calendar up. We said, let's act like we're four weeks out. Let's push an aggressive three weeks and then run a peak week 
That way we can see how your body would have responded so that if we do decide to compete in October or next May, I'll know how my body responded to the peak. And if we have to front load water, back load it, carbs, whatever, sodium. Yeah. Um, so I, I didn't feel like I was struggling with the diet because, like I said, good mental space. Uh, it's easy for me to do cardio just because I feel like I'm motivated. And the diet, like you said, when you have like a real reason to be like, no, I'm not eating it. It's very easy. Yeah. Um, so uh, we decided to do an aggressive three week diet and then peak. And then we're going to shoot a bunch of content photos, videos, and stuff like that yeah. for run everything. And you're very structured too. Like I know that cause I wake up at four 45. Uh-huh. I know if I text you anytime after five, like 5am, uh-huh. you're normally just, you up, you respond, you're, yeah. and, you, and you're with it. Yeah. No, um, I'm up, I'm on the computer. Yeah. I'm like getting ready to do cardio. I'm getting my shit together. I'm like that. That's one of the structure things in my life that I think, uh, is a good habit that I've instilled in myself is getting up early and just being ready to rock and roll. Um, so we have that going on here soon. And then I'm looking forward to eating out again. And it's not that I can't eat out, but... Uh, it's harder because well, they it, sneak shit harder, in the food. It, yeah. And like come... So like contest prep, for example, at like the 15, 16 week mark is when I'll stop eating out. And then if I have a craving for some, I'll just cook it. Like yeah. I want Chinese food. So I look up a recipe and I make fucking my own general's chicken. Shh. Or if I want Buffalo wings, I look up a Buffalo wing recipe and that's my way of like, I like cooking anyway. So yeah. that's my way of like killing that craving. Air um, frying the shit out of everything. Air fry everything. Labs.com. That, that's not mine. It's not a real. I should grab it though. No. Why? Just drop the labs off. All right. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Wink, wink. Air fry everything.com. Yeah. That's definitely pro- taken ha- if it's not taken did you get any uh questions on your instagram i got tons of questions on my instagram how far do we need more time i gotta pee really bad but i could hold it in for a little bit longer. i gotta pee too um ooh. Should we go, wait, how much time is it so we're an hour five. Oh, holy what fuck. i can do is i can i can cut a commercial break no i That's think long. i think we'll just pause it right here like did, did we cut a, we're back bro did we cut like a little we had to have cut a segment in there no we didn't cut a segment we're just so it's just it. like stop it's then. just we went to the bathroom um, all right. <clears throat> so I asked people to ask questions. Okay. I think a, a lot of them are already covered. Um, just in general, just in general. So we're going to do, I'm going to do rapid fire. Ooh, do all we right? have like a, a sound effect for when we do this? You have to make the sound effects. Oh God. Uh, dive in deep. Oh, Nick, I can't do that. <laughs> dive in deep to real estate market growth and potential. You said quick. The the real estate market around around here, specifically in Whitefish, is rough. Yeah. Everything is so expensive. Everybody thinks the cost of living out here is really low. One hundred percent not, not true. Oh, no. all right. I wish I had questions in front of me. No one asked me shit. I also didn't tell them to. All the cool shit you do. You know, this isn't going to be good. Everyone just, it's like, it just says, and vegan. It's like, what? what? So should we just cut? Should we just end it here? Maybe. There's not one oh, good What is your here? average time that you work out per day? Okay. I you work out first. an hour and a half. How about you? Uh, I work out cardio in the morning, and then typically training is 60 minutes. In between 60 and 70 minutes is kind of where I fall. Oh, that's pretty good. What you're, the fuck does that mean? You're quicker. <laughs> You do upper body and lower body too. Yeah, I do high frequency. Oh, how have you been impacted by the virus? We answered that. Yeah, we did pretty good. Drew on that. and his role and your relationship. Oh, that what would be a whole Jesus, podcast. Drew! I think I had to do a podcast with Drew because yeah. Drew does so much. Like, you know what? I think the funny thing is when people are like, "Wait, Carlos does the videos. What does Austin do now?" People are, and it's hilarious. Yeah, it's exhausting because I think that. But I never... I well, I also don't think people realize, from an outsider, they don't realize, like, how much stuff we're doing. Yeah. And how many things are happening. Like, yeah. uh, you know, it, it is different than it was. And I think that there's a lot of people out there that, like, it's just one guy running a supplement line. Right. And it's, like, no big deal. Or it's, like, two people running an apparel line. And I think a lot of people don't realize, like, we're, we're how right. much stuff we have going on, mm-hmm. how real our brands are now. Stuff like that. So that's a good one with Drew. Yeah. I, I'm trying to get Drew on a fucking show. He doesn't want to come over. Have you noticed that? Well, He's, I think no, no, I, don't, I don't think he doesn't want to be on a show. I think he doesn't want to come on and specifically talk about real estate. Is like the vibe I'm getting. Okay. Because real estate's so different here. You, know, right. you know that. Yeah. 
And um, and he's in the boat of like, well, I don't know anything about real estate. We just live in a. I got a I got a area. question for you. Wait, someone asked me one. Uh no, but. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. Why is upset. Onward always sold out, and why do the flavors change so much? Fucking people. Onward is always sold out. Um, it's, first of all, it's not always sold out. Second of all, the flavors change because we're trying to keep it exciting, and we get a lot of mixed feedback, so we try to keep variety coming, and then when people ask for flavors, like, hey, why did this flavor sell out? Then we bring it back. I got a good question for you here. Have you ever attempted to lunge walk 800 meters straight. What? What are we? 800 meters? What's this? Fuck in the UK? How far is that? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it sounds like something I would never try to do. <laughs> My lunges are like, I'll do 30 steps each leg, which is down the turf and then back up the turf. And then you walk up to the prime crossover and then you come back. At so the answer steps. is no. No, I don't um, know what 80 fucking 100 meters is. How do you approach balancing and staying organized with so many different endeavors. That's one thing I'm very impressed with you about is how are you so organized? Uh, I think I've just always been that way. I think it comes from like as a kid in high school and college having to juggle ice hockey, lacrosse, uh, freelance work, schoolwork, relationships. I think I've always just been in that environment where I needed to juggle a lot of different shit at once and write shit down. I have mm. post-it notes everywhere and take a lot of notes in my notebook. Bloated while being vegan? Question mark. I don't know. That's a your question. I'm not. Blo- I'm not bloated. I'm not even like Is really. Like the opposite. I'm not really even gassy anymore. No, I think when you first go vegan, you don't really know what to eat, so you eat a bunch of weird you shit. You eat all the fake. Instead fake of just diet. eating like real food. Um, I think the other thing too is like, there's a lot of, all of a sudden you're like, it, even if you do eat clean, it's a lot of leafy greens yeah. and it's a lot of, fibrous um, vegetables. fibrous vegetables and legumes. So you, you become a little gassy, but then that all works itself out. Yeah. Um, so like there is that week of, you know, whatever. Um, a lot of them are, we'll so we, we have some, we have some good, um, topics. Well, no, we have some good podcasts already recorded. Yeah. So like a lot of these gym ones we're going to answer. Um, some of the Dana ones. Rags background and the introduction to the company F&F. They That's want to know that. Name. That one's coming up. How did you meet Dana? That one's coming up. Yeah. Um, so, so next yeah. time we'll have to be You know what specific. the good thing is? I, I think we're pretty on track with the new ones that we have. Hell yeah. Are you a fit chick now? Yep. I don't know. That was geared toward me, right? No, that was that was me. <laughs> what the hell does that um, even mean? I don't know. I think he was taking shots at me. I'm oh. gonna go to his. I'm Tell gonna block. To I'm gonna block him right now. His profile picture is like probably him doing something stupid. Or no, it's probably pri- private. A hey, little guy. Yeah, fuck that dude. A little guy. I mean, he has muscles, but he only has one inch on Flex Lewis, so it means he's only five one. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> that's on all I have. That note. You know, sometimes I just need to rely on the whole tall thing. So are we done? We're done, bro. All right. We're done. That was good. What are you so, going to do now? Uh, I think, so I'm going to actually practice uh, rolls. Oh, nice. So one of, my, one of my dreams is to be able to jump over a car into a somersault like, uh, like Tony does. Tony. Real world tactical. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I like to call people by their first name, so it makes me seem super cool. Yeah, I, I thought you were talking about Tony Hawk, and I was like, oh, I haven't even seen that video yet. No. You're talking about a different Tony. Yeah, Tony Real, Real World Tactical. First I thought Tony Hawk, and then I was like, Tony the financial advisor. I did say that earlier. And then I was like, earlier. Tony my brother, and then I was like, wait, none of them people jump cars, and then you brought up Tony yeah. Tactical. <laughs> Tony Tactical. Uh, I'm going to train legs. Are you? Yeah. Are we you going to wear we, we the both new have, tights? Yeah, so right now we're both sitting here and we both have the new tight samples on for men. Which is weird. People want to see this on video. What? What They want to see what on video? Us both wearing tights, recording a podcast. Oh, let's fucking go then. All right. Good night, Dana. Right? That's <laughs> Say good night, Dana. Good night, Dana.